Hi, welcome back. It is time, yet again, for me to try and recreate foods from books, movies, and TV shows. Today, it's gonna be Avatar The Last Airbender. This is not a hot take, but my god, this show is so good. I just finished watching it for the first time since I was like nine. I don't think my nine-year-old self paid that much attention to the plot. I've forgotten almost everything about this show, which now I'm really grateful for because these past few weeks I kind of got to experience it for the first time all over again, paying very close attention to all the food and drink mentions this time because I knew I was eventually going to make a video about it. Food plays a huge role in the Avatar universe. There's definitely some differences you can point out between the four nations cuisines. The air people were known to be vegetarians with a love for baked goods and sweets. According to this reddit post here, they made sure they ate foods that had a low impact on the environment. Water tribe food is of course very ocean related, lots of fish, seaweed, Sea prunes is a, is a classic example to name here. The Earth Kingdom is so huge, it's hard to describe their food in one sentence. Cabbage is the first thing that comes to mind here. Uh, but yeah, they grow lots of fruits and veg. Eat rice, soy, noodles, dumplings, animal products like, like turtle duck meat, for example. Of course, Fire Nation food is known for its spiciness. Spicy noodles, spiced tea, uh, sizzle crisps. Oh, you're getting up? Can you get me some fire flakes? Oh, and fire gummies! For this video, I simply picked random food moments from the show and I, I must say some, some really yummy and interesting recipes came out of this. For those new here, I'm also making everything vegan and so I should probably mention that none of these recipes, none of them are authentic in, in any way. Um, they're simply just inspired by the show and by the different real life cuisines that the Avatar world is heavily based upon. Let's get into it, starting with some unfried dough. What is this? That's our new festival food! Unfried dough. May we eat it and be reminded of how on this day the Avatar was not boiled in oil. Here I had the option to either do like a yeast donut type dough, which probably would have been the more accurate way to go about this. However, I wasn't too sure if a yeasty dough would keep its shape enough for me to form little humans out of this, and so I opted for cookie dough instead. To a large mixing bowl, add all-purpose flour, powdered sugar, baking powder, and salt. Combine those ingredients thoroughly, then add some vegan butter at room temperature, which you're going to cut into cubes before adding it to the mixing bowl. Stir everything with a spoon until the butter is coated with the flour mix. Also add some vanilla, then get your hands in there. Knead the dough like you would a yeast dough, but only until it comes together. If needed, add one to two tablespoons of cold water as you're mixing and shaping the dough into a nice big ball. Wrap it up in some foil or parchment paper and place it into the fridge for at least one hour. I have found the longer it stays in the fridge, the better the cookies will end up tasting. Okay, maybe, maybe three days max. But yeah, in the meantime, I got to do some crafting. I don't have the right cookie cutter for this, and so ha I had to create my own. I tried drawing the Aang-like shapes onto a piece of cardboard first, then ended up switching to paper since I couldn't cut properly through the cardboard. The aesthetic that we're going for here when drawing these is essentially sad, deformed gingerbread men. Now onto the arrows. My first idea was to make Play-Doh like buttercream frosting, coloring that blue and shaping little arrows out of it. So for this, you'd have to mix some room temperature vegan butter with a hand mixer for a few minutes until it turns all white and then you'd add the powdered sugar to it a little, little by little um, until it turns into this very malleable paste or Play-Doh. For the arrows, we're really only going to need a small portion of this, enough to cut out like 15 arrows, but you can store the rest in the fridge for up to a couple weeks. If it's too wet, after having added the food coloring, add more powdered sugar. If it's too dry, add a couple more drops of food coloring or water. Be careful with adding too much liquid though. 
So that's arrow idea number one. I think it's a bit nicer looking when it comes to the color. The clay is super delicate though. So I think overall the second method is a lot more efficient and just makes more, it just makes more sense. And that is simply turning some of the cookie dough blue. Roll out the dough in two batches on a floured surface. Since we used powdered sugar in this, the dough will be a bit on the softer side, meaning you could even flatten it out with your hands and merely use the rolling pin to smooth out the top. Gather your DIY avatar people. In order to avoid cutting into the counter, I did the whole thing on a big cutting board. Um, you can also just simply use a glass jar and create like little avatar heads. That's a lot less effort. Bring the arrows and angs together. Now, as for the eyes, I've got a couple ideas here. Poppy seeds, anise, chocolate chips, Black lentils, which I don't think are really edible if you don't boil them. I, I just did it for the aesthetic here. Now you have to decide whether you want to serve them up raw, like in the show. I don't know how much of this my stomach could handle though. Um, so yeah, I would definitely advise you to bake them in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for around 12 minutes or until the edges start turning a deep golden brown. The buttercream frosting, I wonder what would happen to it if you baked it. I, I guess it would melt, but yeah, these are really, really good. Moving on to these spicy Fire Nation dumplings from the beach episode. What an episode. Quite different to the rest of the show because we get to see Team Azula having to deal with just normal teenage problems, for the most part. You're pretty. Together, you and I will be the strongest couple in the entire world. We will dominate the earth! The dumplings only have a quick cameo in this episode, but they still look really good to me. I think they are gyoza, but they could also be something else. I'm not too sure. I took a bit of a shortcut by buying the dumpling wrappers. For the filling, prepare some soy granules or some other kind of ground meat substitute. You could even just break apart a block of smoked tofu with a fork and use that. Finally cut up some pak choy, some ginger, and two cloves of garlic. Bring a large skillet with a bit of oil to medium high. At this point, the soy should be soft enough. If it's still a bit dry, that's okay, then add a bit more water to it later as it's cooking. Add the soy meat to the hot pan and fry it for around three minutes while stirring frequently. Then add the pak choy, garlic and ginger and reduce the heat to medium. Mix in some soy sauce and rice vinegar. If the soy is still not quite cooked through, go ahead and add a splash of water or two. Add some chili flakes and or sriracha and also salt to taste. For the sauce, combine some cornstarch and soy sauce. Mix until there's no clumps left. Then add some sriracha, some rice vinegar, white or balsamic vinegar would also work. Add rice syrup or any other type of sweetener and some water. Mix it well and set aside. Folding gyoza is not my specialty, you could say. I partially blame it on the store-bought wrappers being very dry around the edges. I tried following this video by Serious Eats. They show you how to fold these perfectly. Either I'm just too dumb to fold these or it really was the bat wrappers. Either way, I've now come up with a folding method that even I can follow. It probably already exists out there, it's not genius. Here's what I did. Dip a finger into some water and run it around the edges of the dough. Then add a teaspoon of filling to the middle, fold the circle in half, and make sure the edges are closed fully. Then you're going to crimp the edges like so, kind of like you would in the traditional way. I really don't know how to describe it with words, you just kind of crimp it. We're going to half fry, half steam these. I wish I had one of those bamboo steaming baskets. Anyway, first add some oil to a non-stick skillet and turn the heat to medium high. Place all the dumplings inside, closely next to each other. 
let them fry and sizzle without moving them for two to three minutes or until the bottoms start to get nice and golden brown. Then add some water, close the pan with a fitting lid or a big plate and let them steam through for five to seven minutes. If the water has evaporated before the five minutes is up, you can just add another splash of water. In a separate pot, I quickly brought the sauce we just made up to a boil, you know, activating the starch and mixing it thoroughly for two minutes or so. Now in the show, the dumplings are seen without any sauce, so you can just easily serve them up plain. I just thought it would be yummy to have them in this sticky sauce. So after steaming them, I poured that over, letting the dumplings cook in there for another two to three minutes. And then I, I also added some spring onions here. I also find that the sauce covers up any of my awful, awful folding skills, so I think that's just like a little hack in and of itself. Remember when this show invented smoothie bowls and fruit ninja at the same time? I don't see anything wrong with having one of those fruity beverages while we plan our strategy. We're gonna be making a mango bowl. Super simple, very refreshing. These are my swords. To my food processor, I added two mangoes and two small apples. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing these are apples, along with some lime juice and ice. You know, since this is in a, in a bar, tavern type setting, I guess you could also make a cocktail out of this. Maybe add rum, tequila maybe? I don't know. Uh, but then you could make lots of tiny drinks out of, out of this bowl. But yeah, this was very tasty. The fact that my food processor didn't blend the apple peel fully only bothered me a little bit. I said it earlier, but cabbage is one of the first things that comes to mind when I think of the Earth Kingdom. The cabbage merchant who's constantly losing his cabbages, he, he seems to be everywhere. According to the Avatar wiki, the merchant's signature dishes include cabbage cookies, cabbage noodles, and cabbage soup. I thought to combine two of them and make some sort of cabbage noodle soup, the, the, the cabbage cookies I'll be saving for a later day, I think. <laughs> First off, cut up some vegetables, some spring onion, um, use the white part for the soup and save the rest for garnishing it later. Two cloves of garlic and a bit of ginger. Cabbage wise, I went for a mix between white cabbage and savory cabbage. Napa would be nice here too, pak choy of course. Um, broccoli even. Just make sure to look up how long your cabbage needs to cook and then judging from that you'll know when to add it to the soup. Bring a large skillet with a bit of oil to medium heat. Add the ginger, garlic and onion, letting those cook for around two minutes before adding some pho type spices. I didn't go for the whole pho spice rack, I just used two cinnamon sticks and two pieces of anise. Those are the easiest spices to fish out afterwards and they, they do the job pretty well. Then add the white cabbage, some soy sauce, balsamic vinegar, and also some maple syrup. Mix everything and let it caramelize a bit, letting this cook for another two to three minutes before adding your vegetable broth. Now this is going to cook on a low simmer for around 10 minutes. If the water evaporates too quickly, add a bit more veggie broth here and there. Then after that, the, the white cabbage should be nice and soft at this point. You're going to add the savory cabbage pieces. That one needs to cook for about 5 to 7 minutes or until tender. In the meantime, cook up your rice noodles separately according to the packaging. Then season the broth to taste with salt. Perhaps also add some chili if you want. If you want it to be more tangy, add some more vinegar. If you think it needs a bit more sweetness, add some more maple syrup. Then serve it up. First, add your noodles to the bowl and then pour over the soup. I also ended up adding some pre-fried pieces of tofu, which I got from the organic store. You can also add it to the soup a bit earlier. And yeah, add your green spring onion parts, some sesame seeds. And of course, I finished it off with some lime juice. Last but not least, we're visiting this scene from season two. What's that smell? It's juke. I'm sure you wouldn't like it. Actually, it smells delicious. I'd love a bowl, uncle. Juke is essentially rice porridge that you cook 
for a long, long time on a low simmer with lots of liquid until it turns almost soupy. It has many names and comes up in all types of variations all over Asia. Playing off of Iris love for jasmine tea, I decided to make some jasmine juke. Lots of recipes tell you to wash your rice first, so that's what I did here as well. Of course, I went for some jasmine rice here, some, some shortcut jasmine rice. I added that to my pot alongside a cup and a half of water. Bring this up to a boil. Add a generous pinch of salt and another two cups of water. Wait until it starts to bubble again and then reduce the heat to medium low, letting this cook on a low simmer for I would say 20 to 25 minutes, mixing it frequently. In the meantime, I made two cups of jasmine tea, one for the juke and one for myself. Um, at this point, the rice should look like this. Now add the cup of green tea. If you don't like green tea, you can just use water or vegetable broth if you know for sure that you want to serve this savory. So I mixed in the tea and also added a bit of grated ginger. Why not? Bring it up to a boil once again and then reduce the heat to medium low again, letting it simmer for another 30 minutes or so until you've reached a porridge-like consistency. I think traditionally the rice is supposed to cook even longer, so feel free to maybe give it another 30 minutes or another hour until the rice has broken down almost completely. Serve it up either plain, like in the show, or top it off with whatever you like. I ended up making two versions of this, the first one was sweet, I added some maple syrup first, some strawberries, and some of this white nougat chocolate. You know, this topping with the strawberries could be another reference to Iro. Isn't he eating like strawberry pastries at some point? Anyway, for the savory version, I, I first mixed in some soy sauce. I also added some more fried tofu, some peanuts spring onion, and sesame seeds. Also sriracha. If you like savory oatmeal, you're surely gonna enjoy this one as well. And that concludes this video. I have not seen Legends of Korra yet, but that's probably gonna be the next thing I'm watching. If you're looking for more Avatar-themed vegan food content, definitely make sure to check out my girl Emily's Avatar, What I Eat in a Week. She's an amazing, hilarious person. I'm sure you're gonna love her content as well. We both coincidentally had similar video ideas at the same time, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, check her out. I will link her video down below. Also, thank you for watching. I don't know if I said that already. Um, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye! <laughs>